All right, folks, it's another Thursday in the land, and of course, in the calendar, it is May 17. But also, to tell you, it's the first day of Ramadan, so we say Ramadan Kareem to all our Muslim faithfuls. Welcome. Today, we continue to put our country in perspective, and the talking point for this morning, an IGP Senate president feud and national harmony you know, all over the world, governments exist for the benefit of the citizens and not the other way around. By extension of logic, you say people should not be afraid of their government. But when principal officers of government feud over what is not worth fettering about, then the business of government is reduced to a ridiculous extreme. The chief law officer of the country, that's the Inspector General Ibrahim Idris, Inspector General of Police, and the country's number one, three man and Senate President Dr. Bukola Saraki appear to have drawn the battle line in the sand. That's the talking point for the morning. We'll expand as we go along. But le let me meet and greet my guest. Matthias Baba Sado is so many things woven into one. He is professionally an engineer, mechanical engineer. He is a politician. He does not like the word politician, but then we'll come to that. He's also a convener of the Hope Platform Initiative. Sado, welcome. Thank you very much. Hope Platform Initiative. Yes. Well, Hope Platform Initiative, it's a group of young people that uh, came together um, a couple of years ago as a result of what we saw in the society where hope seems to be deemed and then everyone seems to be searching for how to survive on its own. When we saw that um, we had a society where individuals are beginning to struggle for survival on their own. And you know, like you said in your opening statement, uh, we have government that's primarily, this responsibility is to cater for the citizens of the country. But at what you have at the moment, you have a society where virtually every single person that become government for themselves. Every one of them provide for themselves, electricity provide for themselves, education provide for themselves, healthcare provide for, for So virtually everything, people became their own government. And then there was not that central thing that holds the citizens together anymore. So for that reason, we came together and said, look, there is a need for us to have something that can be defined as a central hope given point. Yeah. And that's basically a except what that, hope except is about. that yeah. hope is a good breakfast, yeah. but a bad supper. Mm. I also know you are running for office. Yes, I am. You are hope, hoping to be president of this country. Absolutely. Now you are president and your number three man, that's the Senate president, is feuding with your chief security officer. It gives you a lot of concern. Well, it does. But then the question is, like I said, the question is this. You, we must get to the roots of all of these issues we have in the, as a country. First of all, what brought about this? We, first, we had a situation where the presidency and the um, and Senate had their own problem at a point. Um, right from the beginning of the, this administration, there were problems about who they wanted to be in government, be, in, uh, be the Senate president and all of that. And then over the years, we've seen the struggle, the battle between, uh, the running battle between the presidency or the executive and the Senate, the National Assembly. And then, you see, we have a society where people don't really, particularly those who are in leadership, don't understand the role which they are supposed to play in the society. So once these things is misplaced, you discover that every single person just continue to struggle to grab power, to grab resources, to grab power, uh, reach to be able to, um, you know, display power that I am more powerful than you and all of that. So you have, you will continue to have these things for as long as what remains sacrosanct in their mind is their individual interest. So uh, I think also 
the presidency, the, um, the legislature, and then the police. I don't, I really don't, I totally don't understand what is going on between the, this, particularly between the Senate president and the, uh, and the, the IG. This is, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. But again, yeah. you know, let's not forget the fact that here you have a president that a couple of um, um, months ago, stood in, the, in Benue State and said, I sent the IG to um, Benue State. I didn't know that he didn't stay here. So if you have a situation like that, then you begin to question the um, authority of the president over those who he has appointed to work because Senate president, I don't think this is really a feud between the pre Senate president and the IGP. I think it's a, the, a, a, a fight between the institution of the National Assembly and the IGP. And this is really not good for our democracy. We've had all of these things. At this point, we're not supposed to be. No, no. When the Senate president categorically tells you mm. that the IG is asking that suspects be moved from Kwara State to Abuja in order to incriminate me, mm. you are reducing it to the yeah, you are talking about the two elephants here. Yeah, but then these two, the IGP is a member of executive. Unfortunately, that is the way the system is. All right. Then the Senate president, all of this started with the invitation to come to the Senate, not the invitation to come and meet the Senate president. So if the invitation was to come and meet to, to meet to, uh, to the floor of the uh, Senate, and then it has degenerated to individual battle between the two of them, we should look at what's the main cause of the problem. The IG went to court mm. to stop the invitation. The court said, no, you must honor the invitation. Mm. So he went there. You mm. sent someone. No, 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 it, it, you know, went there and he was invited three extra times. Okay, and okay, he, yeah. he didn't go. Previously. Mm. So we are talking about personality clashes here. Yeah, but this is, that, it's the same thing I'm saying. Now look, until we have institutions that are more powerful than people, until we have institutions, can you imagine that the Senate of, um, um, uh, um, uh, American Senate, we invite the FBI director, and he will. He said he's not going to go. Have you ever heard of something like that before? So why are we having such in Nigeria? Is why should he, Why should they be that the IGP was invited? You, I don't know. You invite me Ma to Ma come Ma to Matthias. Maybe it's because we talk about a so-called Nigerian-type democracy. There is a democracy. Yeah. Except we are saying we're not practicing democracy in Nigeria. Uh, because you took me to America, that's why uh, yeah. I mentioned you know, that, so, uh, But if we are practicing mm, a, presidential, a presidential system, and as they do in America, mm. so question, why won't we play by the rules? Then, then because, yeah, you, you have men. Uh, in America, they are in America, a lot, virtually everything that is being done is done with in the, the consideration is what affects the citizens of the country. Yeah. But here in Nigeria, it's about... Well, it's about what affects these people. It's about themselves. And uh, this, is, this has been my, this has been something I've been advocating for, that when will the citizens of this country be able to say that, yes, for once, we have people who are our leaders and their primary responsibility is to take care of the people. To be that they, they are concerned, or the things that they are debating about, the things that they are concerned about, is what affects the ordinary man on the street, not the ego fight between two individuals. This is what we have seen all over the country. You see what is happening in Kaduna State between the, gov the governor of Kaduna State and the three senators. You see what is happening in River State between the senator and the uh, well, the the, 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 go the former governor. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. So this is. All of these things, when are we going to have men that when they are fighting this battle, we will be the one that will benefit? When are we going to have such people that you are, you're going to say, okay, look, I want to have education for 
all the less privileged children on my street. And then I'm saying, oh no, this is not what they need. They need pipe on water, they need good roads, and then we are competing, we are discussing, we are debating these matters as regards to what affect the ordinary man. So let, let's go to what you said. I'm, I, I'm, I'm picking them one by one. Would you say the IG is testing his powers? Oh, obviously, he's testing his powers and also um, trying to prove a point. I'm trying to prove a point in such a way that um, saying, okay, I belong to the executive arm. And for that reason, because I, I don't see any reason why the president should not call the IGP and say, you know what, go to the Senate. What do they have to do? Can, can, they, can they arrest you? Can they imprison you? Can they strip you? It's not possible. All right. The Senate president has declared the IGP an enemy of democracy, mm. not fit to hold office inside or outside the country. Mm -hmm. What is he ex exercising there? Is it the, when he declares this? Yeah. Does it make it? Does it? Does it? Invite, make it does true. It, does it? Does it? Does it? Does it make it true, or does it invalidate the position, the current position that the IGP holds? See, if he expresses that, whether even as a as a, as a Senate. It does not change the fact that the man remains our IGP until the president who appointed him say, no, you are no longer my IGP, right? So if that is the case and you are, you are the member of the executive, why would um, whatever the Senate president saying, be, be, these are, to me, this rancor is absolutely unnecessary. And these things are being done to take away our attention from the, the mainstream, the most important things. And this is what I've been, I've been saying. Uh, I will and you believe the two say, gentlemen are acting out a script? No, they, it could, it's not, it may not be a script, but it could be some form of distractions that, they, that is, even they themselves don't understand why they are playing out. But for us... That, that, sorry, that's why we had this discussion. Mm -hmm. you, you know, because the man, some people are likely to just gloss over it mm. when they tire, they, you know. But things <laughs> like this portray us to the outside world in bad light. Yeah. And they go a long way. A lot of things portray us in the bad light outside. Virtually everything that is done in governance and government in Nigeria currently, you say, um, I think I was reading somewhere in, in, in international news and then somewhere somebody was saying something about a senator jumping out of a moving vehicle. All right. So a lot of things already portray us. Do you look at that, what that, that was not a script. <laughs> yeah, well, it was this, real. These are these are things that you see mm. out there, and you, people are wondering how do you get to have a situation where you have some of the most brilliant human beings on the face of the earth that are, Niger are Nigerians, mm. and then you have caricatures that call, people that call themselves leaders that cannot hold themselves responsible, people that cannot restrain themselves when it becomes... Look, there are moments where you, as a leader of a society, you... you as I am, not, I am not an appointed or elected president yet, but sometimes in my bed, I cry for this country. I weep because I see the kind of pe things that people say on the street of our country. I weep because I see the kind of things that people say about our country. So you, you as a leader, you must get to the point where really what comes at the top of your mind, at your least, all that you are thinking about is, look, how do we make this society one of the best? What are the visions? What are the things that are supposed to be driving us? I, re I read about um, Lin Kuan Yew. On, this, on the night of August 1965, Singapore was cut out from Malaysia. In fact, they were, Mal Malaysia pushed, they asked them pushed to them. get out. Yeah. All right. This was like this was like um, like an IDP camp. It yeah. was a swamp. It was a dirty environment. Sir, today Singapore is one of the best nations on the earth. Why? The simple thing is that they had a leader, and everybody keeps saying that they, they, they had a leader that had a vision. People say, "Oh, Singapore." They, um, Lim Kuan Yew was a dictator, was, uh, was in power for 30 years or for a number of years. Don't forget the word benevolent. Benevo he was a benevolent dictator. He, he, far, as far as I'm concerned, he was a leader. He was a visionary yeah. leader. He was a man. But that, he was dictatorial. He had to clamp down 
on certain things. That's, that's why Singapore is a, is uh, a great force he, today. He, he did. He did. And every single and, thing... I'm sorry. And your Singapore is a so-called third world country, or was it so-called... Was a third world yeah. country. It formed after, uh, five years after our country was already existing, which was part of the top nations as at that time, Nigeria as at 1965. You can imagine how we, the position we, we occupied as at that time. Now, but here is what I'm saying. This was a man that was left with a nation. And I saw the movie about Singapore, about uh, Lin Kuan Yew, and I saw the moment that, exa that thing happened when the Singapore was hewn out of uh, Malaysia. I saw the tears that fell out from the man's eye. And it was a tear for, so every, even when he was, uh, uh, people say he was a dictator and all of that. Look, there were no election cycle that, sing, that Lin, Lin Kuan Yew did not contest. So he, was not, he did not impose himself as a, he won elections time or time and time again. So this, the same thing, if we have visionary leaders, leaders that say, you know what, this is our current. Can, can we afford a Lin Kuan Yew here? Well, we have a whole lot of them. We have a lot of young people who are very, very, very passionate in Nigeria, very patriotic, very visionary, very competent, and very able Nigerians. Ma much as like you, young yes. people. Yes. Are they carved out for leadership? We are training ourselves because now, here is one of the things, one of the favorite quotes by Lin Kuan Yew. He said, well, We are giving a nation. We were here we were with a nation without a signpost, without direction we are next to do, what next where we are supposed to go. But one of the things that he looked into was the people. He looked to the people that this is our these are the best asset. Now he says something. People's trust in government. Is you can't estimate the price, the worth of people's trust in a government. Now, one of the things that we have we, as a society at the moment is that we have leaders that um, there's no trust that existing between them and government. I, I'm not young, to, young Nigerians. Let, let, let me not shoot. I, I'm not shooting down what you just okay. said. Singapore started from almost near zero. Absolutely. But we had at independence a country with a lot of promise. A lot of hope. Yeah. Everything was going well. Absolutely. But we bungled it. Yes. Now this, this That's why I meant that's what I meant by can we afford a Lee Kuan Yew here who would be uh, benevolently dictatorial? I think what we need to do at the moment, because of the way our, the society is structured at the moment, there are a lot of things that need to be done. First of all, we need to have a leader that can be able to give Nigeria and Nigerians a vision, a vision that they can believe in. Perhaps a Nigerian dream? It, perhaps a Nigerian dream. Someone who can come and define the purpose for which we live. The reason, the sole reason why we exist as a society. You know, like in the words of uh, um, uh, Nelson Mandela, he said the world will not respect Africa until Nigeria ends that respect. So Nigeria must understand its position in this continent, that the, the responsibility upon the leadership of this country and the people of this country is to build the capital nation for the black race. So if that is well understood by Nigerians, and Nigerians, because one of the things that I see also that our leaders over the years have failed to do is that the, the leaders have failed to galvanize the energies of the citizens to build the kind of country they want to build. Matras, at this point, are you not scandalized mm. that my Senate president, my country's Senate president, mm. and my country's IG Inspector General of Police mm. are feuding? See, I am... I am very, very, it's an unfortunate situation. It's sad, it's a very sad development. But again, here you have a group of people, like I, oh, like I've been mentioning, I've been saying, you have a group of people that do not understand the reason why they are occupying the offices they are occupying. So for that reason, you say, the, 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 Miles Moreau says something. He said, when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. This man, if this man understand that 
Thousands of young people are living outside there without a, a meal a day. If they understand that millions of young Nigerians do not have a job, if they understand that we have about 15 million children in the north that cannot afford education, they will change and they have the heart that yes, these people are our wealth. They will change their mindset. They will begin to focus on these important things. But alas, here you have men that the only thing that they are concerned about, every, I've met with a lot of politicians since I started this political uh, All right, let me take you to the Senate President's state, Kwara State. Mm. There's a gentleman, Shegun, is waiting to talk with us. Shegun, good morning, welcome. Good morning. How are you, sir? Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, let me contribute to the Mr. Matara. Go, go on. Thank God that is a young man like us and uh, is our hope of our future. So you are talking about the IG and concerning the Senate President number three man in this country. Is the IG should be under the president or it should be under the three executives, the three, the, three, uh, the hand of the government. Yeah. So once those things happen, our country can be go furthermore to be at rest. If they call the IG, he has, he is not going to attend to them. And once president sends in something, he not he send it to them, he is not going to attend to them. And that is it. If we are still running this constitution, this our able constitution where they give to us now, since even you, you are get there next year, you cannot be able to run our nation well. Thank you very much. Yeah, Shagun, except that this thing runs both ways. Hmm. If you if you have if you are nailing the IG, you also must find room. Hmm. To blame the Senate president. Uh, that's, 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 yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Two because wrongs, it's a two, two yeah. wrongs can't make a right. Yeah, yeah. it's not. It's, it, to me, I think, like I said, it's a is a misplaced battle. It's a misplaced battle. The, this is a very unnecessary battle. However, it has happened. It is happening at the moment, and then the all the allegations and everything is going on. However, we must not take away our eyes from the the cause of this problem. Yeah. The cost of the problem is extremely important. If you have a situation where uh, people don't understand their role, <laughs> and again, another very important thing is that you have, a, you have a country, like this young man said, our constitution is the, the, the one we have at the moment. People say, oh, you cannot run a country with this and all of that. Mm. But how well have we run with what we have? Just a minute. Okay, we'll come back to that. Mm. We'll take you to Ibadan now. And Johnny is waiting for us. Welcome, sir. Yes, and Johnny. Yeah, hello, good morning. Morning, I greet you. Yeah. Please, actually, I want to make a contribution towards the program. Go on. Yeah, you know, Nigeria, Nigeria of today, to me, I can just say Nigeria of today is a field state. Because the for for the Senate to invite IG and IG show to honor the invitation. I just think definitely it is being leading by example. So far there's no respect for the rule of law in Nigeria again. And it will be governed by a constitution. So what effort would the IG, Inspector General of Police, have? And then the Senate that is controlling will invite him. After they can't impeach him, they can't do anything, they can't arrest him. But he is being followed, the threat being laid down by the federal executive. Hmm. Because okay. there is no respect for the rule of law in Nigeria. I can't just imagine where a court will give an order to the president or to the high chief, and then they will not honor him. So, okay. what example are they giving to the masses in the country? So now, for instance, now, in the situation by court give an order to me, definitely the IG, Secretary General of Police, and the Nigerian President, they are telling me not to honor it. Well, that, that's your opinion. 
Mm -hmm. That's yes. a, yeah, it is your opinion. I don't see any reason whereby they will invite and hide hey, you, or whereby uh, they cut you. And Johnny, my my yeah. job my job here is to stand in the mid middle. I'm not speaking for the presidency, neither no, am I. I uh -huh. but, but, but so so when you jump to a hasty um, uh, conclusion. conclusion like that, you are you are misleading some folks. We no, are no, saying no, 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 both parties, like, uh, and Johnny, no, in this that, in this case, it, both parties are wrong. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that, you know, to pass the court and give a verdict that the ID should honor, it has to now honor the court verdict. Yeah, no, we, we, we grant that. We grant that. Are you getting me? So, uh, uh, and Johnny, so th 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 thank you. you. Th thank you. Thank you. You know, let, let's go back to the Constitution briefly. Okay. You know. All right. So you, yeah. we, 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 know, we talk about... You, you said... Yeah, the wordings you may not agree totally yeah, with, yeah. but are we practicing what, what we, have, we there? have at the moment? Yeah. I think, like I always the, talk. The, the Constitution, for instance, mm. says there shall be no state religion. But, mm. but many states keep sending people absolutely to, to, on, to on pilgrimages. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now you see, like I, like I said, you have a situation where when people are elected to office, uh, immediately those people become the law in the society, and then the Constitution becomes oppressed. Now, the one we have, the constitution we have at the moment, it might not be, there's, there is no perfect constitution anywhere in the world. But there's, there's no way that this constitution tells you, as an individual, that you can steal money. There's no way the constitution tells you, as an individual, that you should go out uh, and, uh, um, and, and uh, uh, embezzle money. So why are these things being done? Because yeah, let, let me pause you there. We have a gentleman, is called Super. It would be interesting to get to sound him out. Super, welcome. You are in Lagos. Citizen John, good morning. I greet you, sir. Yes, this is Super from Victoria Land. All, right, all right, then. Citizen so, John, let me ask you a question. If I is being invited by police and I refuse to show up, what will happen to me? I hope you are not begging the question. <laughs> yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah, the police. If the police, the, 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 the police you, say, we need you to oh, come. You, to you, our you go there. I, but, I will go there. Yeah. But how? But this is the, the Senate who is inviting the IG, and they have the constitutional right to summon anybody in their chamber. Yeah. And yeah. the IGP refused to show up three times. Super. I am saying. Was that, let me give you the question back. Was it proper for the Senate president to have declared the IG not it fit is. for a public office inside and outside the country and an enemy to democracy? My, my dear brother, they yeah. gave him an, an option free, they gave him the chance. No, 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 yeah. don't, don't, don't play the question down. But I, okay. I got okay. you from, oh. yeah. <laughs> but let, let, me, let me make it like this. The police invites you, you must go. I must go, that is for sure. Because it is the police. Yes. But how come if we invite them, they will not come when we have the constitutional right? <laughs> Take, talking about the constitution again. Yeah. Yeah. How come they will not? That is, I mean, that means something is wrong somewhere. Maybe, yeah. you see, Sheikh Usani said it, that look, give and take, all these people that are here today, they will surely go sometime, someday. Yeah. And somebody else will come in. Mm. Okay, that person that is going to come in, he could be, he could be one of the Senate. Mm. He could be a, a friend, I mean, a friend or a sympathy to the same constitutional right. <laughs> Take, talking about the constitution again, yeah. Yeah, how yeah. come they will not? That is, I mean, that means something is wrong somewhere. Maybe, yeah. you see, Sheikh Usani said it, that look, give and take all these people that are here today, they will surely go sometime, someday. Yeah. And somebody else will come in. Mm. Okay, that person that is going to come in, he could be, he could be one of the Senate. Mm. He could be a, a friend, I mean, a friend or a sympathy to the tennis that is going on right now. Mm. And yeah. what of if, I mean, there is reverse in the case? What will that happen? Super, super, because we must go on a break now. Mine is when, I hope it, it does not distort anything if I go this way. If your mama and your papa, they quarrel, your, you, Una, the children, not supposed to know. Yes. Uh -huh. yes, yes. That's yes. the point we are making here. Both parties should not be wrong. They should save us this hassle. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you very much. Thank yeah. you very much. Bye. All right, let's take this break. But we have Matthias Baba Sado. He's a presidential hopeful. 
We'll be back. Welcome back. I'm mighty glad you are still there. And don't forget, we are looking at an IGP Senate president feud and national harmony. Of course, the feud has the potential for aggravating the relationship between the presidency and the legislature. Okay? And this aggravation can go a long way. It affects the people. The people. Mm -hmm. So you had talked about the Constitution. What about followership in this country, followership over time? Uh, well, some, I think followership in Nigeria has been decimated. The people have been defeated in their minds. So you have a situation where an average citizen does not see himself as part of the system. As a stakeholder. As a stakeholder. Hmm. So for that reason, like you say, Mekuna, they do nothing there. Do you understand? After all, it does not affect me. After all, it does not affect my daily, my daily life. After all, it does not affect the security man in my gate that I pay, my, I pay his salary every day. Uh, after all, it does not affect... But he forgets to know it affects the Naira he spends because if we get it right, the Naira will be strong. My brother, I remember when they were talking, we were talking about the devaluation and I was talking to one of yeah. He said, let them devaluate, let them do whatever, let them just do whatever and leave us alone because these people don't have our but interest. I, I, I'm sure you don't trust he, any such statement, but no. let, let me quickly take Yakub. Okay. He's here in Lagos. Yakub, welcome. Yeah, thank you. Good, good morning. Yeah. And then good morning to your guest. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just, let me just take your mind back a little bit. You see, the, from the starting point of this uh, H assembly, mm. Uh, we have been starting some kind of uh, rancor. Yeah. Let me say that. From a DD custom to Magu, and now it's an IDP of uh, police. Now, the issue on ground today is that uh, the Senate president says IDP is about to frame him up. And then I listened to, to him when he spoke in the National Assembly yesterday. And then I read it on my Twitter handle. These criminal people that they arrested in uh, Kwara State, mm -hmm. none of them have ever mentioned this name, present name yet. Then, if you are not pretend, what is going to come out of their mouth? And then, mind you, this is not the <laughs> first time that IDP told the state to, that, for example, that say, there is something going on in Oshu State last time, and then they were ordered to bring all those criminals down to Abuja. This is the, not the first time the IDP has impressed on a criminal offenses. That is number yeah. one. Number two, the senior people, they leave their job and do something else. For example, when they are trying to amend the constitution, they are so, supposed to, to amend the constitution whereby the IDP, appointment of IDP, you should be removed from the president nominee. Who, who nominee? Who nominate the IDP of the federation? That is number one. Number two, uh, citizen Jones, when they get to a stage where there is devolution of power, citizen Jones, what the people did, the uh, senior people did that day, they were footed dancing down. If there were devolution of power, the state could have had a kind of a power under their status. See, citizen Jones, we are going to find ourselves in this kind of mess until we have a courageous senate leader and the senate people because yeah, okay. they will leave their job and, and, and follow the shadow. They're okay. supposed to make a law for this country. That is going to help the common man of this, in the street. And then they were not doing that. They are in fact, uh, DJ yeah. Cotton telling yeah. him to wear your uh, uniform or not wear uniform. Yeah. What is going to do yeah. about the city that uh, took yeah, yeah. to put the street? Thank you, Yaku. Thank, thank you. you. You know, it doesn't detract from what I said. I mean, nobody says as human beings, there can't be friction. As I said the other time, mm. no pun is intended. If my dad and my mom were quarreling, I never knew mm. throughout on, until they died. I never knew, but I know the in retrospect they did most. But so it should not boil over because they will 
the Senate president will attract support. Mm. The IG will attract support. Yeah. And opinion is divided. Mm -hmm. The country is at loss. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, that, that's what you get. It's, uh, it's, it's an unfortunate situation. It's really sad uh, when you have uh, this kind of battle. That in fact, when you talk about maybe our parents having the arguments and all and so of that, and most times, you know, their arguments are often even in, in as, as it regards to the children, as regards to running of the family. Not sometimes, most times, it's not about their personal egos. All right. Now, but here you have people. Where, anywhere you have ego battle, ego battles cannot be fought behind the door. It have to be in the public, and you are you living in an in an age where this person take on to Twitter, take on to social media, say something, and then the entire nation is. So, is on so fire. You, are, you are you are suggesting my father should have gone to Twitter, my mom too. The, the, you get the point. Uh, yeah, the, let, let me <laughs> take Okpara. Okpara here is here in Lagos. Welcome, sir. Yes, this is John. Good morning. I greet you, sir. Uh, good morning, engineer. Good morning. And to the news, uh, you can see what is happening in the nation. Giant of Africa. There is no, <laughs> there is no retreat. Some people are above the law. That is what we are seeing here. The law is meant for the common man here, but the big ones, no, it's not meant for them. Mm. Okay, look at the person, uh, uh, the, the man from the Senate, they invited to come to the police. He didn't go that day, first time, second time, third time, before he should show up. Now, they are inviting the IG to come. The man also has to reciprocate. That is the decision we are find ourselves. <laughs> there is no respect of the law, there yeah. is no rule. Yeah. And the presidency is there watching. So, I think they are just making themselves in the, in the public and uh, the whole world is seeing them. This is our nation. May God help us. Uh, and, and may man help God to help him, you know, because mm. it's not a magic thing. Yeah, it's know? not. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's something that uh, we as a people must take responsibility. It, it, sorry, you, you know, in 16 years, mm. going 18 now, yeah. it would have been easy to deal with the Constitution, some of the sore points. We talk about mm. um, executive powers, yeah. concurrent yeah. Uh, list, and um, mm -hmm. the... the, the Nigerian Senate, not the eighth one, over mm. time could have done something about, yes, about yes. the Constitution. And yeah. then we, if the police IG refuses an invitation, he, he could have been punished. Yeah. So yeah. respect for the Constitution but, 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 is... But here again, you have people, like you have a, 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 a very docile Senate where you have majority of people go into Senate as retirement home. A lot of people go there to sleep. They don't, no yeah. contribution, nothing. So really, where is the rigor that goes through lawmaking in Nigeria? Yeah. You know, so. And if you like law breaking, <laughs> because something must, should be done about it. We have a Stephen here. Stephen, welcome. Yeah, hello, good morning. Morning, I greet you. Yeah, my contribution, actually I want to, I have a contribution. So the, the answer just is something. He's making a reference that uh, if my papa and my mama, they are fighting, I'm less concerned. This is no, 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 not, no, 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 not less concerned. You don't get to know. You, you should not know. That's what I'm saying. That's the point I I'm making. No, yeah. But this is one thing. This is Nigeria. I need to know because this is my country. I don't see the reason why something will be happening in my country and I will not be able to make a contribution. <laughs> no. Moreover, the issue of the, I actually have received people calling the issue of the IG and the Senate. The two of them, they are four. Are you getting me? We are listening. The two of them are four. But one thing I want people to know is that, you know, for the Senate House to invite IG, they have something they want to trust out. And then, this is democracy. Hmm. We need to respect the rule of law. Though, maybe, the re I can see, the reason why the IG is trying not to honor it, maybe they have some anti party game with one another. Because even in abroad, I just came back from the UK, United Kingdom. 
I get it. And yeah. things are not being done in a way like that. Mm -hmm. Whenever you see people, they are well more concerned about their citizens. Mm. Because in this region, and this is only, it is only my country that I see that the, the, the presidency, the Senate, the Inspector General of Police, the custom, they are not working right. So then what are they, what, what, which of our interests are they representing? Okay. So which okay. of our interests are they representing? So they, they don't tell us that, okay, they are just there for their own selfish interests. Thank you. I, 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 I hope Stephen realizes or remembers that mm. in Britain, mm. the constitution is unwritten, yeah. but everything is written on the heart. That's so, right. so it's, yeah. But yeah. as is written. Yes. I think, like, like a lot of people have said, the thing is, what interest are these people serving? Or the, whose interest? Whose interest, you understand. Now, I, I, for the past few months, I have been on the political street and I have seen Nigerians that are, you know, you know clamoring for political offices. Everybody wants to lay hold on the political office. Yeah. And then the question I always ask, what interest are you serving? Majority of them see this thing they see the idea of running for political office as a place to go and mass work for yourself. This is about just go there, dominate um, the society, live large, drive big cars, live in big houses, travel abroad, go there, have your head, uh, do, check, check your health and all of that. Yeah, sorry, sorry, let me take you quickly to yes, uh, Delta State where we have a Chukuma waiting. Welcome, sir. Good morning. Good morning. I greet you, sir. I'm hearing you, bro. Yeah, we do hear you. Welcome. <laughs> uh, I want to comment on uh, this morning. Yeah. Uh, good morning, citizen. I greet you, sir. Welcome. Okay, thank you, sir. So I see the, to me, the problem we are having in this country is not on uh, one uh, area, both the executive and the legislature. They don't like to be in, uh, they don't like to be in the Nigerian constitution. Okay, for example, now, the Senate, they keep on suspending uh, their member up to 190 days, which they know that they are in their constitution, that they cannot spend, they cannot support somebody for more than 14 days. And even when a uh, sitting judge court presides on the previous matter, they still went ahead and be suspending their member for more than 14 uh, days, which they know that it's against the law. And uh, they keep on talking about the executive disobeying the law. Yes, the executive they disobey the law. They are themselves who are the senior supposed to live by example, so that when we are complaining, we will know that uh, the senior who are who make the law are obeying the law. Then the other people, uh, the executive, are not obeying the law. It should be we straight forward. But for them to be complaining that the executive are not obeying the law, for them themselves, they are the uh, actually people who disobey the law. But, yeah. uh, especially and secondly they always leave they are what they're supposed to uh, do for the for the betterment of the nation they keep on supporting their member who they think that they is very very faithful to them and because yeah. they, before still it's not like this whatever since the emergence of uh as a delay president it's like uh it's a is divided one side family affair other side mm -hmm. is not the in the senate when yeah. the other one do bad they yeah. will appreciate it. When you want to do little bad, little too wrong, they want to lay him on the head. It, it, it's natural so, to divide opinion, yeah. So that, uh, they will be a, but this country will be a better place for us. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Many thanks. Matthias, you know, the APC's situation is even more, more demanding because the APC is dominated by, I mean, the Senate is predominated by the APC. They have 60 senators and the other 49 PDP. So you expect this harmony to be a given? <laughs> the harmony or the people you have in that place, it's, like I said, it's personal interest. It's not, these people are not there. They are not, there's not any binding um, interest. There's not any binding um, uh, purpose. 
The political party APC that was used in 2015 was was just a horse for people to ride onto power. Yeah. It wasn't something that they would say, "Oh, look, this is these our ideas. These are this is the status we hold." So for that reason, the moment every one of them got into power, they started the whole battle against. And themselves. I, I know you are not surprised. It is difficult to recall a senator, for instance. Yeah, <laughs> but not. we'll get there. But let me take you to Abia State, comrade. Uh, Okora for his waiting. Welcome, sir. Good morning, Sir Joe. It's my guest. I greet you. Good morning. I'm going to speak to Sir Joe. You see, Nigeria, the giant of Africa, we should be good at some of this. This issue of this squabbling, squabbling problem does not help us. We should be thinking of what we do in this country to reach that level of an advanced continent, an advanced country. Because some of this problem we see in Nigeria, Many people look at us because we are a generally as if we are an illiterate country. Because in a country where we have people that know what is correct, what is right, what they are supposed to say at a particular time, you, you, you see the movement. This is sort of squabbling, squabbling, honestly speaking, is affecting Nigerians outside and even here. Because there are certain things we should overlook, not to take it as a point of view. You must do this. Honestly speaking, Giants of Africa, we should represent ourselves as the Giants of Africa. Thank you very much, Mr. Joseph. I'm going to have a great day in Lagos. Thank you. Never too late. Mm. We had been a potential giant for goodness knows how long, you know. Uh, recall, Matthias, that uh, in the years of Ibrahim Babangi, General Babangida, mm. we sent two satellites into space, mm. today they're still missing. And nobody has been kicked. Mm. That's a part of the problem. Yeah. So it's been a long time coming because the impression is created that all this wahala started in this, in this yeah. fourth republic. It no, didn't. no. It didn't. this is what, what, I, what, what I meant when I mentioned followership, mm. which is also faulty. Yes, we have a society, but you see, um, like they said, everything starts the, and, and um, ends on the table or the table of the leadership. Now, don't forget that the first, the person that is supposed to get these citizens to begin to act right, is the leadership, because it's the leadership that drive, that gives a vision, drive that vision, inspire the people to support that vision. Matthias, I, let, let, let me tell you a little something. Yeah. We'll take you to Ghana, okay. where I imagine Maxwell, who is calling in, is a Nigerian. He's in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank you, Sir John. Yeah. Uh, good morning to Mr. Matthias. Yeah. Um, Uncle John, there is something I would like to keep in, in here. I, I follow, I cheer up with what uh, Mazi said from Abia State. Giant of Africa. We are indeed tired of giant of Africa. I live in a little country they call Ghana, less than 30, let me just say, less than 31 million people here. They follow due processes. Nigeria is just who you know, the power you have, the, 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 the office you occupy, and the power that is associated to the office you have. The Senate that is forcing IGP to come, inviting him to come, what moral do they have to invite him to come? Let's say the constitution warrants that, yes, they can invite, because it is the constitution that placed the IGP there, nominated by the president. What moral do they have to invite him? You cannot give what you don't have. That is what I'm saying. That's my own opinion. And it is a situation in Nigeria that everybody does his or her thing the way he feels. Where it suits you, that is where you, you, know, you, you sit tight. But once it goes contrary to you, then you start looking for those loopholes in the Constitution. Um, uh, Engineer Matar, I saw your addition as an appreciation hopeful for Nigeria. Look, I've been monitoring both on Twitter and Facebook. And uh, I would like to tell you, if the... If if, if, if uh, the minds of Nigeria is like mine, watching what is happening in Nigeria from afar, mm. I will say let Nigerians put it in there so that at least with this ideology you have and all the, you know, the statements I had, I had you, you know, um, uh, releasing or making, 
I think you will make a good president for Nigeria. And the change these rounds pose, we are putting in rounds uh, in school pose in Nigeria. Mm. Thank you and God bless you. I, I, I greet you. I agree to you. Don't get deceived by him. It's not. <laughs> He's one of the voters. Okay. <laughs> but the ballot box has to be sacrosanct to get you there. Okay. Yeah. And I, as I told you before we came on air, it's not about you being a young president. Mm. It's about you being your own man. Yes. And then it's about the. the action, I think it also start. It starts from the citizens owning their country. Once Nigeria, this is what I've been clamoring for, that Nigerians need to get to the point where we, majority of us, stand up and say, you know what, we've had enough of these failed promises from 1979. The same promises that politicians have been rolling out are the same promises that are going to be rolled out in 2019, you mean, you, 40 you mean, yeah, years they're, they're later. Using they are using the same script. They are recycling, they are recycling promises the same way they are recycling themselves. Until we break this system and have people that are being that by, from the citizen, from the street of Nigeria, let all of us say, you know what, we are standing up for once and say we are electing our own leader. Engineer Sado, and I put it to you, by, by the way, we should have had a barrister Okwebanwo to join us. You know, I, he, he's uh, unavoidably absent. Yeah, right. I would have uh, put a number of things to him. But you see, it's not about the age of the president, but the age of his, his ideas. Absolutely. Otherwise, Malaysia, you talked about, mm. just elected a 92-year-old man. Mm. And you know, the first thing he did was to probe the man before him, mm -hmm. and we saw what was discovered. His cabinet almost uh, immediately. That's that's it. That's yes, what. Right. It, so yeah. it's the about more about the experience and the age um, of the about, ideas. About 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 experience. We've talked about experience in Nigerian politics for too long, and I think we need to define it. Now we have. I always say this: you have a situation where you have a medical doctor, yeah. right, who says, "I have experience in operations." Just a minute, let me pause you there. <laughs> Ebuka is reaching us. He's the last but not the least caller here. Ebuka, I greet you. Welcome. Yeah, good morning. Sir. Yeah. How are you? I'm fine. And you? And good morning, Mr. Matthias. Good morning, sir. Yeah. Um, other callers have actually spoken a great deal, you know, but I have a couple of things to chip in. First, I want to um, make paraphrase your quote or your talents to say that when uh, Mama and Papa they fight, the children are not supposed to kind of be aware, it should be obvious, mm. right? Then your guest in the studio, Mr. Matai, has said, only if the parents are fighting for the interests of the children. It's mm. a different thing. But in the case of Nigerian um, political scenario, the legislator and the executive, they are showing this is a show of power. It's not for the interests of the country. If it's for the interests of the country, I believe you, me, nobody would know. It will be sorted out amicably and the country will be moving forward. But it's a show of power which, as it's known, power intoxicates. Yeah. The senator, the, um, the executive, they are, is, um, is um, expecting his own authority to the legislative angle to, they don't have the moral grounds to invite the IGP because the, in the time past they have also um, flouted the law. Meanwhile, this constitution and this law we are always talking about, I don't think our legislative arm and the executive arm value this, appreciate this constitution or this law. Because if they do, they will not adhere to one and disobey one. They will only mm -hmm. adhere to the one that favors them and then disobey the one that goes, yeah. that tries to checkmate them. Mm -hmm. Now, I also want to um, um, also make reference to a particular remark. You know, said uh, our youth carved out for leadership. They have to ask the question, sir. Those who are leading us presently, are they count out for leadership? Because if they are really count out for leadership, it won't be they won't be. Case. They will put the country <laughs> first. Not all this drama that is being acted, the senators are saying their own shenanigans, the IGP is doing their own, and these are not for the interest of Nigerians. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It will look like Nigerian youths are not carved out yeah, or ma, are not yeah, yeah, yeah. experienced ma, 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 on Nigerian the, school contest. But yeah. I will tell you we are ready. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for some young man you have here. Yeah, yeah. Before you go, before you go, sir, before you go, since you are the last, not the least caller, before you go, the presidency of this country is not necessarily carved out for a young man without experience and the footwork. That's what we are talking about. No, 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 
no, no, no. Yeah. You see what's happening in um, what is happening um, in France, in, Fr in most European countries. Macron yeah, rose the through the ranks. He rose through the ranks. Which yeah, Nigerian politician, yes. which Nigerian youth yes. is ready to yes. go the whole meal? Beautiful. Yes. He rose through the ranks. But I will tell you that countries within this world where their presidents did not rise through the ranks. All right. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm told, I'm, I'm asked to thank you very kindly. Thank you for, for your perspective. <laughs> about, you you about, want to close about, your thoughts. About experience. Yeah. Yeah. You see, you ha we have dealt with these men with years, hundreds of years of experience in governance and leadership in Nigeria. It has failed us. We have no result. There is no result for experience have not delivered the kind of governance and leadership we want in Nigeria. Which youth will deliver? The, at the moment, our best option is to take our destinies into our own hands and build it for ourselves. Because one Le thing that we must, yes, Legi one thing that one thing that we must know is that if yeah. we have men who are competent, who have character, who are capable, who are patriotic, who have vision and so on and so on. This nation and, will and, be great, and, and not and the entire not world will see a rising Engineer giant Mathias that Baba the whole world Sado. will respect. I wish I was at INEC, and I can tell you, play ball <laughs> with you. But again, I wish you well. Thank wish you, you Godspeed. Thank you very much. Uh, um, the point has been made that both parties in this field mm. are wrong. That's right. And they should go sort themselves out. Yeah. Time is. The Nigerians should focus on getting the, the, the big picture. They should just go focus on the, the, big, the, picture. the big picture. That's absolutely Bye bye now. That, that's Thank our show you. for this morning. Uh, but not to uh, forget to remind that tomorrow morning is another date on this morning. Join Yori Folari bright and early. And meantime, my producer director, Musa Lukman, is spending the first day of uh, Ramadan. I wish him well. At the same time, wish you, if, well you're, well. if you're also fasting, think about the country and pray for yourself. Bye-bye now. Thank you.